Archie here at cricketanalysis.org and we do have our um, player by player analysis spreadsheet up. Something I haven't sort of shown you guys before. It's the res this is sort of the results page of some analysis that's done on a match by match basis. Uh, at the moment, it works very well for T20s and uh, 50 over games, be they domestic or um, international. And I'm just going to run through very quickly what it means without going into too much detail. Um, over here, we've got um, the um, total runs scored for the game, total balls bowled, and the average runs per ball, which we get very simply to start off with. Then everything is based on a batsman's impact, uh, batting and bowling, against the expectation of what they should do on ball by ball basis. Um, so there are factors we can bring into play here that normal stats don't do. For instance, and we'll just pop over here because there is a good example here, Pereira, there are two Pereiras in this, um, I think one of them actually has two R's in their name now, but I'm just sticking to the first one. Uh, Pereira um, is out on the fifth ball of the first over. Now these wickets don't correspond to these batsmen. The, this is the order the wickets fell and this is the order the batsmen batted. So this isn't Dilshan was out here. Dilshan was out further down. This was the first wicket which happened to be Pereira. It was in the fifth ball of the first over. He was taken, the wicket was accredited to Jay Dernbach. Uh, it was accredited to him no matter how it was taken. If it was accredited to a bowler, that's the way it's going to be taken. That's the way we're going to look at it. Um, whether the catch was, you know, we're not going to make subjective decisions alike, whether the catch was down to fielding brilliance or the bowler playing, trying for the edge or the slower ball which gets hit to uh, mid on, mid off. That's not what we're talking about here. Because over a career, over hundreds of games, this will average out. Uh, the, uh, good bowlers will get wickets caught at slip and, and long on, and bad bowlers will as well. It's just one of those things. And good bowlers will get better stats over a period of time than bad bowlers. In an individual game, though, yes, a player can have an impact based primarily on luck. Over a 30, 50 game career, they won't. It will be very unlikely that they would. Um, I mean, luck can hold out for a few games for some players, but it very rarely goes for a career of, of 30 to 50 games. And blimey, if they keep that luck, keep them in. <laughs> it goes against my statistical mindset, but if a player's just always lucky, then uh, play the always lucky player, maybe. I don't know. But that doesn't really have any place in stats, so we're not going to make decisions based on luck or things like that. Uh, so anyway, what we can see here, he gets a bowler's attack score for getting that wicket, and the bowler's attack score is high. Uh, and the reason it's so high is because he's taken a batsman out early in the innings for a low score. And those two factors come into play very strongly. The later you get the wicket, you're robbing, the earlier you get the wicket, the more opportunity you're robbing that batsman to score runs, more runs. If you get a batsman out of the first ball uh, for naught, it's great and you've robbed him the possibility to get a um, whole innings worth of runs. If you get a batsman out with the fifth ball of the 40 ninth or 50th over let's say with just one ball left what are you robbing that batsman of getting at the most he's going to do is hit the last ball for six uh, he might have scored 130 it might be a wicket you've been trying really hard to get but you've not he's already scored his runs the, you, your statistics have measured what has already happened the best he can do if he faced that last ball is hit it for six so he scored his 130, you're stopping getting six How the bowler isn't going to get credited with a lot then get wickets early that's the way. That's that's what's important for a bowler. Get lots of wickets. That's important for a bowler as well. And keep the run rate down. That's what's important for a bowler. And it's a mesh of those three. It average on its own. <coughs> I think is a very poor. Um, I, I think it, it's visible. It, 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 it's a. I, I'm amazed cricket uses averages uh, for bowlers. Um, I don't think this is perfect, but I think this is very good for what we're trying to do, which is measure player impact. So Dernbach because he gets Pereira in the first over, gets a healthy score, a score that's equivalent to a batsman scoring 50 runs. Um, and he ends up getting, uh, I think he also gets a Dilshan a bit later on, uh, when he's, Dilshan's got quite a few runs, and there's, the, oh no, it's not Dilshan, um, he gets the other Pereira, I think he gets both Pereiras out, but he gets 18 points for that. Uh, the batsmen get their um, score, here, batting score, based on the runs and the speed at which they get them. Now it's not a simple, um, the speed at which they get them, it isn't just the you know the faster run rate, he gets his 163 runs per 100 ball or whatever, it's a speed at which they get them compared to what the average is. The average is 
1.61 runs per 100 balls. What did he get them at? If it's a little bit higher, he gets that he gets that credited to him. Uh, if it's above the match average, not the innings average, uh, the match is played by 22 players, not just the 11 on one team. It's what the match average is. Uh, if he scores above that, he gets a bonus to his number of runs he scored. If he scores below that, he gets he actually can score less than the number of runs scored. So Jai Warden, who scores 89 or 51, get, actually gets 108 points, well above, it's considerably higher, because he scored at such a good rate. Um, <clears throat> here we are. Um, Pereira, the other Pereira, scores 23 or 12, actually scores 28, because he's done pretty well. Uh, 11 or 5, scores 14. Now, pro rata, that's pretty much, that's pretty high. Um, he scored three more, he's basically scored a third more, a quarter more runs, between a third and a quarter more runs, or it seems to, because he scored them so quickly. So that's the way that works. Bowling, uh, it's how early you get the wicket, and then there's a defence score, which was separated, rather than try and do it all in one calculation. Um, we'll look at the bowler's defence score. So, Moeen Ali bowled one over, no wickets for four. That's pretty good, because uh, it was going at nine point whatever and over and he only went for four so he actually gets a positive score for that one over 5.64 because that is much lower than the expecta expected number of runs off and over. Dern back goes for a little bit more than average uh, the average is about 48 and a half and he went for uh, 38 and a half and he went for 42. Poor old Bresnan got slapped and went and actually Lou, he didn't score anything here he didn't take any wickets and he went for 48 and four over so he actually gets a minus. <coughs> Jordan well, he's done well here. He's got two wickets here, and he's got he bowled four very tight overs, so he gets a positive there. So does Treadwell. Broad ever so slightly below. Uh, was it seven and three quarters? Nine, eight, twenty-seven. Yeah, uh, nine point six something like that, which is just a bit higher than average. So he gets a slight minus. <coughs> and then the opposition here, uh, Hale scored one hundred and sixteen or sixty-four, so he scores one hundred and forty-two points, which a batsman's taken the game there. Despite the fact that Jordan's done pretty well and probably comes second or third. He's got 49, 70. Uh, Jordan's got 80 odd points there. He's done really well. Um, but the batsmen have actually um, have taken this game. Okay. Um, now how does this pan out over time? Well in an individual game, um, it pan, it luck can play a role. Individual bit of brilliance can play a role. Uh, over a career of 30, 50, 100 games, that sort of thing will average out. What's going to happen with these scores, and including the negatives, is it's going to hold the total score of every player is added up and then turned into a percentage. So if, if all these points added up to 1,000, they won't, but let's just assume they did, then every 10 points would be worth 1%. Uh, and then the number of player uh, number of points each individual player has would be their impact on the game. Now there is an expectation, those of you who know a bit quicker, 22 players with 100% of the game impact to divide between them. There's an expectation that each player on average will provide 4.545 recurring percent impact on a game. That's, that, that is what 100% of a game divided by 22 players is, it's 4.54%. Uh, and this will show players that get above 4.54% have a positive impact and those below will have a negative impact and that can be measured game by game. It can also be measured over a series and a career and it can also be compared to other players in the same team and as other teams. So from that point of view and the fact that it's a statistic that will get better the larger the sample size and it doesn't require anything subjective to be added to it like fielding errors, uh, a catch off the bowler's bowling was that good fielding or did the bowler play for that catch all that kind of stuff we take all of that out of it so it provides a statistically pretty steady um, result which just gets better and removes anomalies the larger the sample size 4.54 being the magic figure now just to give you guys a bit of a, an insight here uh, in 2013 early 2014 Virat Kohli of India Ha managed over a period to have a rating of about 5.3 which is over a period of about I think it's 6 or 70 20 games and a similar number of ODIs he managed to have 5.3 nobody else on either his team India or any of the teams they played against managed to reach 4.9 he was demonstrably above any other player they played and he didn't bowl 
he he was a one trick pony. He just batted. If you'd have bowled as well, all rounders will have, you know, you can have double impact if you're an all rounder. Or as, or as poor old Tim Bresnan found here, you can actually have an imp a double the chance to fail because he didn't bat. So he scored naught there, and then he went for above the average rate. So it can be a double edged sword being an all rounder. You can have two negatives, um, but uh, or naught and a negative in poor old Tim Bresnan's case here, but that's not the case. Um, with Virat Kohli during that period of time, we've had a massive positive impact on his team. So, uh, sorry, this is just a static screen I'm showing. I know it's not the most interesting thing to spend 10 minutes talking about, but what we're going to be doing is behind this, every single ODI T20 international uh, will be, by the time the World Cup comes around in February 2015, all the ODIs, probably going back to the beginning of ODI history, will be in the database. We'll be able to look at every player's impact compare them to the 4.54 average which is fixed as long as there are 22 players well here's an interesting thing some of you may remember about 10 years ago they had the substitute player um, situation and as a big Worcestershire fan uh, I was a bit gutted that poor old Vikram Solanke of Worcestershire now of Surrey kept being picked as England's substitute player so between batting and bowling innings I think you could take one player out and bring one player back at any one point in the game only 22 players could be involved they would only have 11 on the batting sheet and 11 could field but the game as a whole both innings they were actually uh, 24 um, and I'm yet to decide whether to include those to use a slightly different weighting factor or, or how to handle those there are anomalies and the idea was ditched by the ICC pretty quickly and it was a terrible idea um, but it does uh, leave a few anomalies but anyway that aside against the 4.54s what what have your favourite players done and very soon on cricketanalysis.org we'll be telling you and we'll be making the data available to download the bios and you'll be able to say which players and it's some surprises some guys that just sit there and tickle a couple of wickets Chris Harris of New Zealand I did I'll just finish with him I did an impact on Chris Harris of New Zealand and his his impact during the uh, 90s for New Zealand was astronomical uh, it was greater for years on end than Chris Cairns um, now that doesn't seem right does it but it but if you look at the stats yes it does because he scored lots of runs and he took more wickets and he hardly conceded any runs uh, his impact on the game maybe not his impact on an individual batsman by bowling quick and whizzing it around his throat and throwing in fast Yorkers wasn't you know and, and on the crowd wasn't as good but his impact on the game and on the result of the game was consistently enormous um, other ones I've sort of looked at because I've got an interest in are Jack Shantry of Worcester whose impact during the 2014 first class season is enormous it's higher than Ravi Bopara's it's higher than Chris Jordan Ravi Bopara for Essex is higher than Chris Jordan's for the he plays for Sussex now um, it's higher than uh, Chris Wokes for Warwickshire it's about the highest however he played in Div 2 and most of the other guys played in Div 1 but there are some anomalies there it's guys who produce for your team day in day out um, and I'm finding it really exciting to see who these are there aren't millions of those anomalies by the way but there are enough and they're justifiable when you look at their stats you think actually this guy he did take 40 wickets and score 500 runs in the season and look at his you know look who he got out when he got him out and look when he scored his runs and look at his economy rate and his bowling yeah you know taking all that into account he should be recognised as a far better player than he is the fact that he only bowls 78 miles an hour and only scores his runs at you know a slightly lower rate than some of the other guys and doesn't hit in the air very much shouldn't rule him out of being a class player um, I'm not trying to make this the money ball of cricket but if it becomes that then great um, if some of the unsung heroes of your team get highlighted here and if you want to use these stats to find those that's great as well anyway poor own Clark at cricketanalysis.org signing off